Okay, so let's start joining our pieces onto the mandala. Now all the pieces are joined the same way. So we've got week four here, our block stitch, and our first ray. And we're going to join everything together. So we're going to join week four onto the mandala, and then straight away in the same movement, if you like. We won't be cutting off. And then we go straight up and join it to the side of our ray. So the rays themselves, the triangular ones, they don't get joined directly to mandala. They are joined to these rectangular pieces and all the rectangular pieces are joined to the mandala. Which is why we've waited until this week um, to start joining. So we're going to join with our same colour as you've done your slip stitch border. And on the mandala, we're going to be using the third loop. So you've got this round of half double crochet around the edge. And we'll join using that third loop only. In your slip stitch border, we'll only be using the loop that is closest to the edge. Okay, and that goes for the triangular and the rectangular pieces. We're only going to be using the loop closest to the edge, not the whole stitch. Okay, so let's get a close-up of that. Okay, so the stitch we're going to be joining into around the edge is the second stitch. So if you go back to our last row of orange here, we have two half double crochet and one stitch. And we want to start in the half double crochet that is made into the second one of those. For, for me it's this one here. Okay, so I just turn to the back into the third loop I'm going to be starting in there okay so if I just get my yarn so I'm just going to pull that up so I can find it and then I'm going to get my block stitch and I'm going to go straight into this corner stitch so this is where you've done. So we've got the double crochet here and you've got one, two slip stitches. I'm going to sign that second slip stitch. So I want to get into the loop closest to the edge and you want to go from the inside out. Okay, so you're going down to bottom. You've got in position with your hook. Then into that third loop and then I'm just going to pull my yarn through. I'm going to go to the next stitch. So same way again. Into the third loop of the next half double crochet. And then just pull through. So it's, it's like a slip stitch. I'm just going to create like a slip stitch board around. And then through the next slip stitch and then through the next half double crochet third loop and I just yarn over and pull through. Okay, So you always want to keep your working yarn in the middle of the two pieces. Okay, So I go the next one yeah. Only problem with black is it can be sometimes hard to see. So always keep this your working yarn underneath your hook so you always work up on top of it until it comes time to yarn over and pull through. So keep the working yarn underneath, go through that next loop from the rectangle, from top to bottom into the loop in your mandala, yarn over, pull through. And just do that all the way across. So you'll have three st stitches on your um, on your hook when it comes time to pull through, and just work your way down. So you should end up with fourteen of these slip stitches. I'll just get to the corner. Okay, 
So we've gone down to three and a half millimetre hook for shears. Your slip stitch border is made in four millimetre, and going down a hook size just makes it easier to get all your to get the hook into your stitches. Now I've got this other one. There we go. Next one. Almost there. So you should come out when you've finished all your this bottom side at the first um, half double crochet when you've got the next stitch. Why can't I get in there? What's going on? There it is. It's going to be a bit awkward sometimes these stitches but the result is a really good one. This border can be a bit fiddly but the look is well worth it. And do I come out with the right stitch? So there's my half double crochet, the two in the same stitch, and the one above the first one is this one, so yep, I'm in the right place. Right, so if I show you how that looks. With black it's harder to see but you get this braided edge. So we've got a row of the half double crochet from the final row of the mandala and then you get another row very similar above it and I just really love how that turns out. So now we start joining the ray. Okay, so I'll pull this down there. Right, so it's easier to turn this side. Right, so we're going to turn and into that first slip stitch on the side, we just do another slip stitch up. Now, the next one is where we start to join our ray it's in here. Now, don't worry if you haven't got the exact number of slip stitches in each piece. It's not going to matter because I'm going to show you a nice little trick that will mean you can get away with being a few stitches short or over. But I'll show you that when we get to the top. So we're going to start with the tip of our ray and you want the very end slip stitch at the point. Okay, so you go, so we're through the slip stitch on the rectangle into the ray, you go from inside out, same as before, yarn over and pull through. And then into the next slip stitch in the panel and the next one down on the ray and you just carry on the same way. Just make sure you keep your working yarn underneath until you pull through. So then yarn over and pull through. This is a much less time consuming job if you join as you go. So I have to admit, when I did my original blanket I didn't, I joined most of them at the end. And I'm not kidding, it took me about four days to get everything joined together because it is such a big job. And there's so many pieces. So I really, really recommend doing this as you go. So sometimes it's a bit tricky finding all those slip stitches, but... but I think it looks well worth it. And you can see that braid coming through. So it's it turns out like a thicker version of this slip stitch board you've got going on. And through there. Okay, so I'm going to carry on doing this all the way up and when I get to about 15 or 20 stitches towards the end I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to show you how we deal with having a mismatch of stitches so more stitches on one piece than the other. And it's a nice little hack so you don't have to keep counting all the time making sure you've got the right number of slip stitches in the border. Okay, so I'll carry on with that and I shall see you in a moment. Okay, so let's have a look at this join 
with some different coloured yarn so it's much easier to see. Okay, so I've got my working yarn here in the dark purple. This always sits in the middle and it's easier if you drop this in between stitches. Okay, so we're only going to be using the outside loops. Okay, so for the next stitch, go into the outside loop here. So hook from top to bottom so the hook points to the middle between your two pieces. And you're going to do the same over on the other side. The outside loop only and hook going from top to bottom. And it's now in the middle. Bring up that working yarn and you yarn over and you're going to pull through both loops of your slip stitch border and that third loop of your working yarn. Oops, I've chosen some very splitty yarn for this. Okay, and then you've got that join in the middle. So it's your slip stitching, your slip stitch border. It's how this works out, and it just sits nicely in between. So if you're joining yarn and your slip stitch border the same colour, it just creates this little ridge of the same colour going up. It just sort of zips up all the way up. So, working yarn, leave down the middle. It's a bit of a habit to get into, but drop it in between making your stitches. Into the outside stitch, and then over to the other side, and the outside stitch, top to bottom on both. Bring up your working yarn, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on your hook. There you go. And you just get it zipping together. Okay, we do that all the way up. So, how do we deal with the mismatch of stitches? Because there is going to be a mismatch between quite a few of the stitches in this. So, the pieces even. Not going to be much, but especially with the triangle rays and the points, it's easy to miss some of your slip stitches when you're adding your slip stitch border. But we can easily deal with it. So you need to start looking at this about, say, 20 stitches from the end when you join the pieces together. So, say in my green piece here, we've got a mismatch of a couple of stitches. So they say we've got five here and three here. Okay, so five stitches left in the border, three stitches left here. How do we deal with that? Well, we need to add more stitches to the blue piece. So to do that, we go to the next stitch in the green border, throw in the green piece. But in the blue piece, we're going to go into the same stitch that we used before. Then get your working yarn, yarn over, and pull through. So now we have four stitches left on your green piece, and we still have three stitches left on the blue piece. We're starting to correct the mismatch, but you won't notice that mismatch when we have the border. So then you just do a few stitches, in, normal stitches in between. You don't want to put, sort out all our mismatched stitches together because that will wrinkle up one side. And I'll just do a couple normal stitches. Yarn over and pull through. So then we're going to do the same again. Into the next stitch for on the green side. Into the same stitch on the blue piece. Yarn over and pull through. So now we have the same amount of stitches on both sides. And you can see there's no obvious mark on either side. It's still straight, it doesn't show. So if you've got a mismatch of say four or five in those last 
20 slip stitch at the border, you can get away with it. Just make sure you space them out by three or four stitches before you do the correction. Okay, so if you you had less pieces and uh, stitches on this side, you just go into the same stitch you worked before into the next stitch on the blue side, yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, so whichever side you've got more stitches on, you just make work into the next stitch. On the stitch you don't have enough, you work into the same stitch that you previously worked into. And then that sorts out any mismatches. So you don't have to be super careful counting your slip stitch borders. You can just add, you can just sort it out when we join. And that makes it far, far easier. Okay. So I'll just do a couple more st stitches just normally. There we go, one there. Into the other side, top to bottom. Bring up that working yarn in the middle. Always keep it underneath your hook, underneath, and pull through all three. And you get that lovely lovely zipper look. So you're going to keep hold of it. If you want to get used to it, where, where you've got to hold it isn't too bad. It does take a bit of getting used to. And into there. Yarn over. And pull through all three loops. And there you go. That is our joining of the pieces with that slip stitch, slip stitch in your slip stitches and how to uh, correct any mismatched number of stitches in your slip stitch border. So that's, we'll be using the same joint all the way around so I'll keep referring back to this video and enjoy and I shall see you next time for the next piece. Bye for now.